All right, everybody, here with another episode of Unlocking Your Inner Strength. Before I dive into six fitness myths that I have personally blown up throughout the years, let me tell you a quick story. So Saturday, I get to the gym. You know, we had, well, let me preface this. We had gotten a few new uh, chickens the week prior. Matina got one of them. So that's two kills she has on Wednesday, I believe. So, I, and then so the next day, one of our other chickens died. One of our older chickens just had a health issue. So I go to the gym Saturday. I come out, I'm gonna go for a walk with the outlaw, and he goes, look, there's a chicken. I look around my truck, I'm like, what the hell's a chicken doing here? Because it, it was out of place for me, right? It was our smaller chicken that's like three months old that we just got, was perched up, went up under the truck. It's been going up there somewhere underneath. Didn't know it was under there. Made it all the way to the gym with me, got out, runs around, we're chasing it, we can't get it. Goes back under the truck, disappears. We're playing around, banging it with the broom and everything, can't find it. Make it all the way home, she pops out. Made it home safely. About 15 minutes after that, Devin was working out and I go to, uh, put something in the car for soccer. We had soccer that morning. And I was going to make a call. And I hear the chickens squawking. You know, they're, they're always roaming around. They're squawking. I look over at our front steps. They're running down because they're up in the street. And there's a fox on our front steps. Now it has one of our chickens off to the left. It, it makes a beeline towards that one. Poor chicken. You know, nothing, nothing the chicken could do. I actually had picked up a bat because I saw this go, you know, all like slow motion. I was going to chuck the bat at it, but it happened so fast. Watched the chicken, excuse me, the fox run down the neighbor's driveway with the chicken in the mouth, went inside, videotaped it with the boys from our windows down near the creek. I mean, the chicken was, was toast by that point. But that's nature. But I tell you what, I am, list, uh, I am learning more from these chickens, like building the chicken pen right now, just how they behave, how the kids act with them, taking care of them. Uh, I'm learning a lot. It's, it's like the, the hen zen, right? Hen zen, zen hen. I've been, I've been learning a lot from these chickens. So that's the, one of the stories from the weekend. Now, throughout the years, I was just on a podcast and they said, well, how do you always seem to be the contrarian to what's common out there? Part of it is just my personality. I've always been the challenger. I always question everything. I usually need to experience something to to really have it burned into my nervous system. And with fitness, I've always been the one that's not scared to experiment, nor am I scared to step out of the line, obviously, and tell people the truth about fitness. So I've jotted down six things right here that I'm going to go over with you, and you've probably heard me talk about these in one podcast or another. I'll go through them. You take it for what it's worth. These are my direct knowledge. This is stuff I've learned and I've applied and experienced and have used on many, many clients in some form or another. The first myth, and I talked about this a few weeks ago, that you shouldn't train while you're injured. That is the worst advice ever given to anybody. Maybe you shouldn't train the body part or region that's injured, but train the rest of your body. Get the blood flow. The blood flow, the muscular system are like pumps for the vascular and, and the lymph system. They have to contract to get this fluid throughout the body. So keep that in mind. Um, But they need to contract, right? They need to contract. We need to move to help the body part heal that is injured and to get good growth factors to the brain. The body heals through movement, not sitting around. Anybody that tells you to sit around does not know what they're doing. They're not really about health. Figure out a way to move. Even when I was in a wheelchair, I was still training. So that is a, a definite option and i'll tag on to that because all these have tag ons don't um don't ice unless it's pain that's what i've learned when i did my second day i didn't ice at one time only for pain and then the whole ice mythology really came from the it was the 50s or 60s with a boy riding a train decapitated an arm got cut off by a pole they put it on ice got it to the hospital became national headline Ice is a miracle, it's a cure-all. It's not. 
it stopped the blood flow in the arm to preserve it long enough so they could reattach it. You need heat and compression to heal and movement. All right, let's jump on to cardio. Cardio is great if you like it. It's great depending on what the usage is. Let's define cardio though. Most people think of cardio as walking on a treadmill or elliptical. When they talk about cardio, that's what they're talking about. Your muscular system drives the cardiovascular system. Most people are doing cardio because they think it's gonna help them lose weight or fat. It doesn't work that way. Maybe by lowering stress hormones, like walking, it can help that way. But this ties into the myth of the simultaneous model of weight loss, burn calories, cut calories, lose weight. It doesn't happen. In all this stuff, guys, I just use reality math. That's what I've always relied on since the time I started doing this 20 years ago. Look at the gym. Look what's going on in the gym. See what the results are. Experience yourself. See what the results are. Cardio, for what most people use it for, is completely useless. Exercise in general is more for your brain health and your joints than anything. There are certain growth factors that can only get to your brain that could cross the blood-brain barrier through physical movement. Just keep that in mind. Fasting. You guys know I'm huge into fasting. If you had asked me this... Before 2014, I would have told you you're crazy. You're going to lose too much muscle. You're not going to have enough energy, blah, blah, blah. But I kept an open mind like, like I always do. And I tried it when I was getting ready for my bodybuilding shows in 2014. Fell in love with it. Did all the research. Experimented. Experimenting more now. 2019, there was another big shift where, where um, I said, let me start diving in deeper. That's where the panda came from. The black panda and whatnot. Now I'm working on indigo panda and some other things. Like right now, last week, this week, I'm doing 72s. I'm diving back into them weekly to see the effect and to see what it does for my mind and my spirit. So that is a, uh, another thing right there. So fasting goes against the grain of everything you're taught. Basically, everything you've been taught about nutrition, unless you, you've learned from somebody that has, uh, you know, that really understands it and how the body works, has been wrong. So... That would include most dietitians, nutritionists, personal trainers, doctors. They have no idea what they're talking about with nutrition. They might be able to tell you what is nutritious, but that doesn't mean they know how the body works as far as the hormones and insulin and whatnot. It all comes down to that. Let's, let's jump into a training one, and we'll come back to some nutrition. Direct core training, like the need to sit there and do abs or... Um, you know, do some type of spot reduction. Your core is an anti-movement machine, but it wants to resist movement. So you can do this through different carries. You can train it, but we're not going to sit there and do sit-ups. Nor are you going to burn fat off your belly by doing sit-ups or crunches. Spot reduction doesn't work. To direct core training, I like to use like chaos training or different carries. Put the body into different positions where it's going to really have to um, stabilize the spine. Right, that's what the core really does. The core can stabilize the spine or transmit force and power. So that's what I like to look at when training core, and it's done a lot differently than what you can see in a regular gym. Carbs are not the devil. Carbs are needed. Carbs are a protein-sparing macronutrient. Everybody's concerned about how much protein they're getting in. That's another myth. You don't need that much animal protein. I will tell you it's more anabolic. If you're in a, if you're in a building phase, then you might want to get more animal protein in. But when the body is relying on protein as an energy source, it's very inefficient and it's not, uh, it's not a good energy source. Carbs are essential. Eat the carbs that came from the ground. That should ideally make up the bulk of your nutrition, your vegetables, your fruits, your other stuff that had grew from the ground, from the earth. They're loaded with micronutrients. So keep that in mind. Um, talked about protein you don't need nearly as much animal protein as you've been told I, I eat maybe 100 150 grams of animal protein a week some weeks I don't eat any did my in body the other morning 115 pounds of lean muscle you do the math last one I'll talk on I haven't talked about in a while is milk like milk being this nutritious food milk is pasteurized milk is terrible for you it's one of the worst things you can have it's basically like the white devil. It is terrible. 
So with that in mind, if you're going to drink cow's milk, you want to get raw milk. And I was doing this over 10 years ago. Go over to Pennsylvania if you live here in New Jersey, buy some, bring it back. But you, anything that's pasteurized, the protein molecules destroyed, which the body does not recognize and the body will attack. That's why most people think they're lactose intolerant. And I've done experiments on clients with this that were lactose intolerant, giving them a pint of raw milk with a few of them, and they were able to drink the whole thing with no issues. So was it actually the lactose or was it the protein being denatured within that? If you're not going to drink cow's milk, I like almond milk. You know, you could use rice milk or oat milk, but there, there's other alternatives. So those are just some of the things out there that you have to keep in mind. You have to have your best health, your, your health as the highest priority. Don't leave it in the hands of others unless you really trust them and you know that they got a track record. But if it sounds like everything else you've ever been taught and you've tried the other stuff and haven't gotten the results you want, you're doing something wrong. They don't know what you're talking about, these fake fitness experts that are trying to help you. Just keep that in mind. Just keep an empty cup. Empty your mind out. Keep room in there for new ideas, for new things that you should experiment with and develop direct knowledge with. So that's what I got for you in today's episode. You go to kylenewell.com forward slash manual to get my Law Secrets of Fasting audio and manual. It's free. If you have any questions, shoot them to me. I'll do my best to help you. And you guys have an awesome day. Thanks for tuning in. Hit the like button. Hit the share button. I'll catch you guys later.